Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by for a quick check-in with July Reads. So I'm gonna tell you about For the Wolf. I have 60 second reviews for both Later by Stephen King and Wild Women in the Blues over on my TikTok and they'll both be in the real section of my Instagram as well if you're interested in hearing super quick things about those two. I stopped reading, have DNF'd um, House of Hollow pretty early on. I just wasn't connecting, didn't care about those girls, none of that stuff. So I DNF'd it. It's beautiful. I've heard wonderful things about it and I might try it again um, some other time, but obviously it's just not my thing for right now. I understand that it gets pretty creepy um, and great kind of in the middle, but not for me today. For the Wolf is the third book that I finished in July so far and the light's not green in here. I should put my ring light on. Sorry y'all. Um, oh this is better I think. Isn't that weird? Oh I'm making things up. Okay so For the Wolf is the third book that I finished for July. It is or I thought it was really going to be just kind of a simple not necessarily simple but um, mostly a Little Red Riding Hood uh, retelling. And there are certainly some elements of Little Red Riding Hood, but there are also some other fairy tale uh, familiarities going on. And I think, you know, somebody on the back says it's atmospheric, folkloric, and half familiar. That was Alex E. Harrow, who I am really enjoying her stuff too. Um, and I think that that is a great way to describe this, folkloric and half familiar. So there, you're going to recognize some elements of Beauty and the Beast and Sleeping Beauty and all of that stuff um, in this book. So the world is one in which for thousands of years there has been a tenuous treaty with um, the creature in the woods. The wolf, he's called the wolf and who has basically taken hostage the five wise men of this town and the agreement is that basically he doesn't let his bad creatures out to kill everyone the monsters out unless as long as the town continues to send their second daughters so in the family that we're following, our main character, of course, is the second daughter because otherwise that would be fairly boring, right? She's the second daughter of this family. Um, and she has a sister, of course, um, who is the first daughter. So she is sacrificed to the woods and to the wolf. And um, we're following primarily her story as she goes into the woods and um basically becomes part of the fairy tale that's happening in there and then periodically we see what's happening in her in her hometown where the first daughter is trying to figure out how to rescue the second daughter from the sacrifice because she's like that's stupid I can't believe that you guys we're still doing this and she's become queen and she is trying to rescue the second daughter and in ways that are not very helpful to the woods in general. And the second daughter has to figure out, okay, how do I get out of this situation so that I can go and, and tell my sister that I'm alive and that we're fine and all that. They're not fine, it's terrible, but anyway. So I really liked it. I love fairy tale retellings. I especially love stories um, that have those fairy tale elements that you can kind of like, was that from, is that, you know, which can be a little bit distracting for some people. It also makes me want to go back and read, reread the short story of Rose Red and her sister. Um, so I probably will do that. I did find some of it to drag a little bit. I did not care as much about the story of the first sister as it was, it's presented as interludes in between the stories of the second sister. Of course, we have a broody, tortured, martyr-like wolf um, man who, you know, is trying his best. So that's always great. 
I believe, I mean, the characters are 1920 plus thousands of years old. So it's really more of a new adult than a young adult. It doesn't read um, YA in the same way that YA reads. So that's an important thing to think about. Um, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. I did find myself glossing through some of those interlude chapters because I just didn't, I just didn't care about those as much. Um, but the story is well constructed um, and easy to follow, even though it's dense and full of information and well written and all of that stuff. So I would definitely read more by Hannah Witten when she's um, in check pronouns. Yeah, she. Um, if there are other things that she ever puts out, I am there for it. So the next two books I'm considering right now, I've got to read through some of my library books because my fines are racketing up. So my next book is going to be either How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House or The Alice Network. I'm, of course, going to try and read both. This one is something I pulled off of the library shelf because it looks amazing when I was in Henrietta. Um, Henrietta Library, which that um, post is somewhere. And then the Alice Network is one of my 12 Friends 12 Books Challenge for 2021. And I'm pretty sure I have renewed it twice already, so I have to read it this time um, or save it for later in the year. All right, if you've read either of these, let me know if you loved them. If you've read this one, let me know what you loved and didn't love about it. If you read this one and loved it, tell me how long I have to wait before it gets really great. And check out the one minutes over on TikTok. Catch you on the next one.